Welcome to our Wednesday night exhortation. Before we get into our lesson, let me just make a couple of comments about Sunday morning. Uh, this past Sunday morning was just absolutely awesome. Uh, we met in the parking lot. We were able to, to sing together, to pray together, to listen to God's word together, partake of the Lord's Supper, give of our means, do all the things that we typically do while we're here in the building. And even though it wasn't a conventional service like we're used to, it was very, very uplifting. It was just wonderful to be here. And I hope that if you weren't able to come this last uh, Sunday morning, that you will be able to come this Sunday morning. I, I promise you that you will, will be uplifted. You will be encouraged. It was wonderful to, to look around the parking lot and, and to see brothers and sisters in Christ that we hadn't seen in several weeks and to be able to worship God together. and In fact, it would just bring tears to your eyes that it was so encouraging. Come, come and try to be with us this Sunday if you possibly can. Tonight, I would like for, to begin our lesson by ask, asking you to consider three words. And as you think about these three words, I want you to mull over in your mind if these three words suggest good things or bad things. The three words are independence, self-reliance, self-sufficient. Do those suggest good qualities or bad qualities? Independence, self-reliance, self-sufficient. The truth is, I believe that they suggest both good and bad. I don't think any of us want to go through life just living off someone else. Uh, being a moocher on society. Uh, I used to hear my dad say, always parking on someone else's nickel. We don't want to do that. We want to be able to do, to do things ourselves. Uh, I can remember when my children were growing up, they would say, I can do that by myself. Lord, let me do that, Dad. I can do it. And, and I was typically proud of that. I wanted them to be able to do things on their own. I wanted them to be independent and self-reliant and self-sufficient. And I think all of us want that. And yet, if we're not careful, a person can be too independent and too self-reliant. And the thing that I want us to see in our lesson tonight is that in our relationship with God, He does not want us to be independent and self-reliant and self-sufficient. He wants us to depend on Him. And I want us to make that point tonight. And I believe that I can illustrate that with several uh, stories and passages uh, from the Old Testament. Do you remember when God gave the children of Israel manna in the wilderness? How much manna did He give them? Do you remember? He gave them one day's supply. And then on the sixth day, he gave them enough for the sixth and the seventh day. But basically, he gave them one day's supply. Now, I want to ask you, why did God give them just one day's supply? He wanted them to learn dependence on him. So that when they got up in the morning, what they were to learn to do was to depend on God for their daily bread. I'm turning over to, to Judges chapter 7. All of us are familiar, I'm sure, with the story of Gideon and the Midianites. But when Gideon went against the Midianites, he had 32,000 people for that work. And the Midianites covered the land. They were a whole huge force of them. In fact, in verse 12 of Judges chapter 7, it says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for a multitude, and their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for a multitude. There was a whole host of them, and Gideon only had 32,000. Well, God said, That's too many. Tell all them that are afraid to go home. Well, you'll remember that 22,000 cowards went home. And that left 10,000. Well, God said, that's still too many. Take them down to the water and watch all of them that lap, like a, lap the water like a dog and take them aside. Well, when Gideon did that, 
That left only 300 men. And you know why God wanted Gideon to just have 300 men? Look at verse 2 of chapter 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vault themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. The reason God wanted Gideon to have only those 300 men was because he wanted to give them the victory. And if they went with all those 32,000 men, they would be able to say, look what we've done. But with only just those 300 men, they had to see that it was God that gave them the victory. And they needed that dependence upon him. The difference between David and the others in Saul's army as Goliath came out there and defied them. The difference in the two, the others in Saul's army were looking at themselves saying, how can I go up against this great giant? I can't defeat him. And then David, he didn't look at it like that. He didn't look at himself. He said, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And with that kind of an attitude, that dependence upon God, he was able to win a great victory. You see, God wants us to learn that dependence. Now, we're in the middle of, of just a, an awful, awful pandemic. And God wants us, in the middle of this pandemic, he wants us to lean upon him. And he wants us to learn that dependence upon him. You see, sometimes the losses and the misfortunes and the sicknesses and the burdens that bring us to our knees are the very things that make us learn dependence upon God. I'm thinking now of a couple. They had always been just very faithful to the Lord. They had been good people in just so many ways, regular in their services. They knew a lot about the Bible. They were active in the Lord's work. They taught Bible classes. But as they grew older, their health began to break and their health began to, to, to falter. And with that, they took on a humility that really wasn't there before. A total change of attitude that, that, had, that, that hadn't been seen before. Well, these facts were related to their son. And their son said, maybe God's getting mom and dad ready for heaven. Now, I had never thought about it that way. But if they needed to go through a period of broken health to get closer to God, who's to say that that wasn't a good thing? Let me read to you the words of a psalm entitled, Hold Thou My Hand. Now, I'm not going to read you the whole song, but let me read you a, a couple of verses. He says, Hold thou my hand, so weak I am and helpless. I dare not take one step without thine aid. Hold thou my hand, for then, O loving Savior, no dread of ill shall make my soul afraid. Hold thou my hand, and closer and closer draw me to thy dear self, my hope, my joy, my all. Hold thou my hand, lest haply I should wander, and missing thee, my trembling feet shall fall. Now let me tell you just a little bit about the author of this uh, psalm. The person who wrote those words was Fanny J. Crosby. And the remarkable thing about Fanny Crosby was that she was blind. And so often the songs that she wrote suggested the idea of seeing, the need for help and for guidance. And she wrote, I shall see him face to face. And she wrote this song. Many times we have watched blind people as they grope, holding on to the arm of some one person and being led around and knowing what it is to truly have to depend upon someone. And then we see Fanny Crosby who is blind. And I can't help but think, would she have been able to write these words had she not been blind? She learned that dependence on God. I think about the Apostle Paul as great a man as he was and all the things that he accomplished that God seemed fit for him to have a thorn in the flesh 
And I can't help but think that it's that thorn in the flesh that caused him to lean upon God and to learn that dependence upon God. Now, I will tell you, I will truly be glad when this pandemic is over. But if nothing else, if nothing else can come from this pandemic that, that it is just, just infiltrating our country, if we can learn that hope and that dependence on God and lean upon Him, who's to say that there couldn't be some good that come from that pandemic? Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and for all the blessings of life. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you have done for us, for our food, our clothing, our shelter. For Father, we know that all the wonderful things that we have in this life come from your most bountiful hand. But Father, far above all these earthly blessings, we're most thankful for the spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus. We're so thankful for him that he was willing and able to come to this earth, live a perfect life, and die upon the cross of Calvary that we might have the forgiveness of our sins. Father, I pray that when we enter into times of temptation, that we might look to that perfect example, that we might draw ourselves nigh to him and nigh to thee, and that the devil would flee from us. Father, I pray that we would learn dependence upon you, that we would turn to you, and I pray, Father, that during this time of pandemic that you would be with us, that you would strengthen us, that that pandemic could be lifted if it be your holy will. But, Father, I pray most of all that your will would be done and that we could truly learn dependence upon you through this, this time. Father, forgive us of our sins. God, guard, direct our every step. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let me thank you again for, for watching this evening. Come back and, and, and be with us on Sunday morning in the parking lot. We're going to be out there at 10 o'clock, the Lord willing, and I promise you that you'll be encouraged, and I'll see you then.